welcome again to the lecture series, The Ascended Masters Answer the Fundamental Questions of Life. This lesson is entitled, Lesson 10, Part 2, The Great White Brotherhood. The Great White Brother is comprised of ascended beings who are all specialists along some particular line of spiritual service and endeavor. Members of the Brotherhood live only to serve God. They have forsworn serving in the spheres of beauty and perfection and have remained so-called prisoners of love in order to assist the struggling mankind of earth. The service of this spiritual order is to teach interested students cosmic law whereby with sufficient self-application they may gain mastery and finally the ascension. As part of this goal, the Great White Brotherhood endeavors to train master teachers for the development of the human race and to show each individual the road back to the Heavenly Father. In doing so, the Great White Brotherhood is limited by several factors. 1. The help to mankind must be warranted and consciously invited. 2. The Master's help is subject to the cosmic laws as they apply to this planet. These laws must be obeyed. Any deviation therefrom must be approved by the Gormic Board and there must be a very good reason given in order to obtain a variance. 3. In order to accomplish its purpose, the Great White Brotherhood is given a cosmic stockpile of energy on the average once every 100 years. This stockpile is then used to con contact an individual who will act as a messenger and will just provide a bridge from the human to the divine. The messenger will convey to mankind the ongoing activities of the Brotherhood and will give out new explanation and additional details of the laws governing our planet. One master said, We are allowed only a certain amount of energy in a given cycle of time to invest in the evolution of the race. Had it been possible for us to expand our energies to an unlimited degree, we should have long have transferred the Ascended Master Octave to Earth and our task would have been completed. However, the cosmic law demands a balance for this investment of our spiritual energies. If we show such a balance, almost without question, the law gives us additional energies to further our cause. Given these severe restrictions, the members of the Great White Brotherhood are overjoyed when they see that there has been a good response and their efforts have fallen on fruitful ground. One master said that if one dozen committed chiles could be found in one century, the Brotherhood would consider itself fortunate indeed. The Great White Brotherhood is not an outer organization. Only by living and expressing the perfection of the heavenly realms on the physical plane, by self-correcting of human weaknesses, by full adoration of the Divine Self within, and by performing a certain amount of impersonal voluntary service can an individual draw himself into association with the Brotherhood. The Ascended Horse directs the attention of the Chila, but it is up to the steward to make the right choices. No individual has ever made the Ascension without the assistance of an Ascended Master. God 
and the creator of all life in the universe. God, the great I am, is the creator, owner, and giver of all life in the universe. His powers, abilities, and consciousness are beyond human comprehension. They are beings that govern several galaxies. A galaxy is composed of the central sun and several planetary systems. Each planetary system consists of one sun and several planets. The foci of the Godhead of our galaxy and planetary system are the central sun, governed by Alpha and Omega, and our sun, governed by Helios and Vesta. The beings Alpha and Omega are the supreme authority governing this galaxy. They administer cosmic law applicable to this galaxy and they direct the activities of the central sun. The intelligences that govern our planet are Helis and Vesta. It is the nature of God to allow his children the opportunity of becoming co-creators with him. The functions of the karmic board. The karmic board has the following responsibilities. One, to administer the laws of the galaxy as they apply to the planet Earth. It meets twice a year to consider petitions from the Brotherhood and from unascended beings. Typically, those petitions with the greatest amount of support from both the students and the Ascended Masters are given the greatest chance to be approved. There must be a good probability that the energy given by the Ascended Host and loaned to mankind will eventually be balanced by practical works of the students. All petitions are subject to final approval by the cosmic beings Alpha and Omega. The decisions by the, made by the karmic board and Alpha Omega are final. There can be no appeal. 2. To open the Book of Life, which is a summary of the experiences of the last embodiment for each individual who passed through experience called death, showing how the individual used the energy of the last embodiment, constructive or otherwise. 3. To examine each individual and grant or not grant the individual the opportunity to re-embody at a certain place at a certain time. This procedure is known as the Day of Judgment. The Ascended Lady Master Kuan Yin explained, No life team receives in any embodiment any karma then his development will allow him to completely transmute within that lifetime. There is no disease, no distress or condition which through the law of justice and mercy is to be experienced by any life stream in that embodiment that is greater than the developed consciousness and power of the individual to whom that karma rightfully belongs. This is the law and you may tell it from the housetops. The karmic board does not have the prerogative to allow only chilas of the Ascended Masters to embody. The masses must also allow to come in for spiritual development and mastery. Therefore, the members of the karmic board are not beings waiting to meet our punishment. Their one service to God is to find ways and means by which each soul can be given the greatest opportunity for spiritual progress to balance his debt to life and to complete the goal of all life, the ascension. The tremendous fear and dread which the orthodox world has induced in mankind concerning the day of judgment is unfounded and unfortunate indeed. It is primarily built upon the fact that very few individuals live up to their promises to the light and therefore reap the fruits of their harvest. 
The karmic board is a merciful body of helpful intelligences, not a scourge to punish the bewildered life stream. The members of the karmic board are Portia, she is the goddess of justice and spokesperson for the board, the goddess of liberty, Nada, the goddess of love, Pallas Athena, goddess of truth, Elam and Vista, Kuan Yin, goddess of mercy, and the great divine director who is the Manu of the seventh root race. Now let us talk about the office of the Lord of the world. The Lord of the world is the head of the spiritual hierarchy of the earth and is under the supervision of Helis and Vesta. The Lord of the world supervises the great white brotherhood. He serves primarily with the karmic board and the world teacher. The first Lord of the world was Sanat Kamara. The present Lord of the world is Lord Gautama. This concludes Lesson 10, Part 2. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it and I hope we will meet soon again for part 3 of this lesson. God bless you.